Hi everyone and welcome back for part 2 of our video series here of the Fire and Ice Effect. Now if you joined me last week what we covered was the ice effect of that hand, today we're focusing on those fire elements. So if you haven't actually watched that video yet, it's okay, no worries, we are going to start fresh with this one and you know feel free to watch the other one if you want it has nothing to do with this video we're going to go over different effects but that last video did cover a lot of different textured tips and tricks and some fun different material if you're kind of new to that area so i highly recommend checking that out but like that last video i am also going to supply the stock images for this one too if you want to go ahead and follow along feel free to change things up a little bit experiment with it but just have fun so let's just go ahead and jump right into this video and let's get going Alright, so we are picking up where we left off last time. Now, if you did not watch that previous video, that hand in that bottom right corner, that's what we completed. So if you want to watch that, feel free to check it out. Let's move on to this top left hand. We're going to immediately start out with this lava texture. And we're going to make a quick copy of this just so we can always have a backup. And let's go ahead and lower down that opacity. And we're going to resize this and just move this up here. And basically what I'm kind of concentrating on is just that stream of lava right there. I want that to run through the center of the arm. So that's what I'm rotating and just trying to get that right angle. But let's go ahead and hit that check mark. I like where it's at and we can turn up the opacity and let's add a layer mask to this. Now if you alter option click in between these two layers here, that'll help you clip that to the layer below. And right now we're just using a soft round brush to paint back this texture just to the areas that we want. So I'm going to take a couple more seconds to do this with this texture and then we can go ahead and move on to our next texture. Right, that's looking really nice um let's go ahead and just touch this bottom part of the arm just a little bit more but overall i really like the look of this all right so let's load in our next texture same thing we're just making a copy of that and this is another picture of some lava and lava rock i try to keep the images consistent with one another so for this one uh right where that wrist is bending i kind of mapped this up beforehand but i like the look of where that little chunk of lava is kind of going around that so that's what i'm aiming for there and we're going to clip it to that layer below again so that way everything's confined to that hand. And I'm actually just going to pause here for just a second because I want to point out what happens a lot of times when you add all these textures, you see the look of it right now, it starts to look very two-dimensional. So when you're adding and painting back these textures, make sure to preserve a lot of the original skin and those features so that way it helps not make such a 2D look or you add the lighting and shadow as well to give it a little bit of depth. So that's just one of my quick little tips when working with textures. Let's go ahead and invert that layer mask. And just like that first texture, let's just go ahead and paint this back in. I'm not gonna use this for the whole hand. Like I said, we wanna preserve and see some of that original detail. Just kind of painting back some of the features that I like with this texture. So essentially what my goal is for this hand, I want it to be more of a, a transitional effect into the fire. I wanted the fingers to be more fire and then the, the arm to be more of like this rock texture. So that's kind of, at least what my idea is, my vision for this. So we're just gonna load in the same texture once more, and I just wanna add a few more effects to some of the fingers. I try to, you know, use these images to my advantage, to think of what spots might look really cool on this. So just some of these areas that have the different pieces of lava here, I kinda wanna just use it maybe as a little bit of a, a border and outline to the, the hand. So that's what we're trying to do right now with that first finger. And using the warp feature is always really helpful in this scenario. All right, so let's go ahead and clip that again to that hand and add the layer mask and invert it. And let's just zoom in a little bit here just so we can kind of see where we want to add some of this back in. We're just gonna do little spots over the hand and not the whole thing. Remember, we just wanted to make it look like a, a nice transition to those flames. And we can even add a little bit on the thumb here. I think that might look kind of cool as well. Let's just kind of paint a little bit here. All right, so let's see the before and after on this just to see how things are looking. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I might paint black on the thumb a little bit. I might have gone a little bit too heavy. But guys, honestly, at this point, it's just your personal preference. Add some in there if you like it. Great, keep it, you know, zoom in and out so you can kind of see how things look from far away and that kind of give you a better idea of what you want but uh, there's no right or wrong reason to it just do what you might think looks nice and we're just going to add another texture to continue on with this effect 
So because we've already done this a few times, you already know how this works. I'm going to go ahead and speed through this um, as I again just kind of <laughs> play around with these textures here. So I'll be back with you in just a moment once we are done with these textures. So I'm just kind of putting my final touches on this real fast. Um, let's go ahead and now add a solid color adjustment layer. We're going to add that below those textures and let's zoom in here. And I've already found the color I want to use ahead of time. So we're going to use AD3114 and go ahead and hit OK. So it's a nice reddish tone here. And we're going to go ahead and put this into, um, I think an overlay blend mode is going to look really nice. And let's just go ahead and maybe lower the opacity. It's a bit too heavy right now but I want to go ahead and just kind of increase those red tones. And I'm just gonna paint black on some parts of this hand here so it's, we can again, just kind of bring back some of the original color. Now you could have also gone ahead and do like a um, color balance. You could have used curves for this. Um, a lot of times I just like using solid color adjustment layers because you can always adjust those. All right, so for the next solid color, we're gonna put at the very top. This one's gonna be FBAA7E. And what we're going to use with this solid color adjustment layer, let's find a nice little blend mode to use first, but um, I think we're going to go back to the overlay. Yeah, so let's go ahead and invert that mask, but we're going to use this one now to just to enhance some of the glowing effects from the lava. So I'm just painting some of this back in over that just so it makes it stand out a bit more, helps it pop and just really effective. All right, so I'm just going to clean up some of these textures real fast. Sometimes I can get a little lost once we start adding a little bit, but let's clean that up a little bit. And now I want to go back to our original solid color adjustment layer. Just lower that down just a bit more. It's still a little heavy for my liking, but all right, we're at a good spot here. Let's now go ahead and transition to those flame effects. So as mentioned before, we have the lava rock as a nice transition, but the fingers, we kind of want to use more flames. So let's turn on this first texture here and we're gonna make a copy of that like we did with the others. And with this, we want to put it into a screen blend mode so we can get rid of the black and keep all the bright colors. But what I want to do here, as you can see already, that brightest part of the flame, we're going to use that to essentially outline the edge of our fingers. And I'm going to do that a lot with these flame textures. Um, I think it looks really cool when you can use some of these bright points as a bit of an edge and to outline some of these features so that way you don't actually lose the definition and the integrity of the shape of the hand itself. So that's what we're doing here. And we're just gonna repeat the same cycle over and over again and uh, just get this to where you want it to be. So same thing, I'm kind of focused on that same bright part, but we can right click and flip this horizontally. And I'm just gonna use this towards the bottom of that thumb there. So you can always resize it, right click it and warp it if you need to as well to just get it to the spot that you want it to. And then same thing, we're just going to invert these layer masks and just paint away some of the spots that you don't need. But uh, yeah, just do this a thousand more times and uh, we'll be there. All right, so let's go ahead and use this next texture. Same thing. This time we're going to use it on the finger here and you can see that I've just kind of used it on the edge at the bottom there. So we're going to paint black on those areas that we don't want just to get rid of it. And we just want to use this again. We're just using this as a bit of a border so that way when you have it all together, those bright points is going to create a nice edge for us so that way we can still see the individual fingers. That's what our goal is. We don't want to lose those fingers. All right, so a couple more times. And just like what I did with the other texture, it's a lot of repetitive motion here. So I'm going to speed through this and I'll see you at the finish line. Okay, perfect, we've made it, finally. And now we're at our next texture here, which we're going to apply some of these embers just to create a little bit more effect and make it look a little bit more realistic. But I really hope you 
kind of saw what I was talking about during that uh, speed edit there by using those bright parts of the flame as a bit of a border on those fingers because if they all the textures kind of look the same then your fingers start getting a little bit lost with each other so by using those bright parts again it creates that separation and those boundaries but anyways uh, we are now on to these embers here so the first thing that we want to do here with these embers is I just want to darken this up a little bit after we've created a copy so let's go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer and we just want to darken those dark spots because now uh, when we go ahead and use the screen blend mode you're not gonna still see some of that original image so let's just go ahead and first create that to a smart object and I'm just gonna take a second to organize myself here with some of these copies make sure that uh, we're naming our layers but, okay so let's go ahead and put this into screen blend mode and let's go ahead and resize this and just rotate this to where we want it to be I want this to kind of flaking off obviously where the fire parts are so that's kind of where I'm aligning this up to right now so something like that looks good and let's invert the mask and then just using a soft round brush you can paint some of this back in and another cool thing too is when you're working with these textures um, if you have other textured brushes instead of using the soft round brush tip that can be really effective as well so just some things to think about but okay, so now what we're going to do here is we're going to add a solid color adjustment layer on top of all of this. And for this, let's go ahead and use FF3C00 and hit OK. A nice orange color. We're going to put this into a color dodge blend mode. And let's invert the layer mask on that. And have you ever seen like some metal that just went through the fire and it's nice, a really dark reddish tone because it's so hot? That's essentially what we're trying to accomplish here at the bottom of the hand. Obviously, the temperature is high, so we want to just create that realism as well. And just at the bottom there, just bring in some of these darker red points so that we know that it's hot. And it's just also giving off some really cool glowing effects as well. But for this layer, I actually want to go ahead and double click on the layer itself. So we can go down to our blend if options and we're going to option click on this bottom anchor point, slide it over a little bit so that way we can bring some of those darker points coming through. And we're going to hit OK. So let's see the before and after on that. Looks really good. So let's add yet another solid color adjustment layer. I'm just going to stick with this orange. Um, find a nice orange color to use for this. And we're going to put this into an overlay blend mode. And let's invert the layer mask on this. And we're going to command click on that original hand so that way we can bring up a selection of the hand. And what I want to do is just go ahead and enhance some of these highlights just a bit more. And just again make them pop and stand out a little bit more than what it was before. But ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much going to be it. I mean, we're going to add some final little details here, but we can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. We're almost done here. So I'm just grouping all of those textures together, organizing myself a little bit here. And we're going to group this all together so that way we have the firearm in and of itself together. And let's open this back up. And we're going to add a layer underneath this because we're just going to add some glowing effects to this. Um, obviously it wouldn't be complete without some glow so let's just find a nice yellow orange you can always sample some of the flame colors on here to use but we just want to lightly add just a touch of glow around some of the edge here and because we are going up against a black background you want to make sure that the opacity is very very low because the color is going to come through pretty strong so even if you adjust it by the layers or by the brush settings go ahead and do that we're going to switch up the color a little bit, find something maybe a little bit darker of a red, and we're going to use this for some glow. A lot of times when I'm using the, the glowing effects, I like to use it underneath the subject I'm working on, so that way you're not losing some of the details. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of times you also want to use it on top of some of the subjects as well. Um, just kind of pick and choose and be mindful. Ultimately, you want to preserve as much detail of the subject that you're working on so just be mindful and think to yourself you know by adding glow here can i still see some of the definition that i want to see things to think about but we're gonna finish this up here adding a couple more glow to some of these spots and you can see right now i just want to touch up some of those edges there and i'm going to lower the opacity because again it is against the black background so it's coming through pretty strong all right, so we're gonna add a, another color um, to use here and I'm just gonna switch this up to something maybe a little bit brighter, more saturated. Yeah, we'll stick with this orange that looks fine. And I'm just gonna come over some of these spots again right by the edge right of that hand there just to try to make that a little bit more bright behind. All right, 
So now is gonna be the time where we're gonna add a little bit of glow on top. So this is one of those instances and I'm just gonna find a very light, light yellow and those bright points at the edge. We're just gonna enhance those and make those just pop just a little bit more. So I'm gonna add some glow on top of those areas. But all right, so honestly, if you wanted to stop here, you're more than welcome to. Uh, it depends what you're going for. I think what I wanna do now is I just wanna take this a step further. Let's go ahead and add a color balance adjustment layer. So let's go back into this group here, click that top layer, and then we're gonna come down and add a color balance adjustment layer. And we're gonna slide this a little bit more to the red tones. Essentially what I wanna do is just make parts of this a bit more saturated. Now we're not gonna do the whole hand, so don't freak out on me. We're just using little parts of this just to make it a bit more pronounced and more saturated. So we're gonna add another color balance adjustment layer. And for this one, I'm paying mainly attention to just kind of the fingernails. It still had a bit of a natural color to it, so I wanna bring it, you know, introduce more reds and yellows as well. So that's what I'm doing right now. Again, we're just gonna do this right by the fingers and make those stand out just a little bit more as well. Yeah, pretty cool guys. All right, so just because I don't want it to leave it against the black background, what I wanna do now is just add a layer underneath all of these hands, and by all these, just the two hands, and we're just gonna create a bit more separation and division between that fire and ice, and maybe this top left will just kind of create a bit of a red glow. I mean, if this was gonna be my personal project, I'd do something a little bit more elaborate, but just just for the video. Like I said, I didn't really want to leave it against the black background for you, so we're gonna introduce some color. And so I've got the red here, so let's just add a little bit around here. If you want to add more embers, you know, something to think about, you can do that. If you want to add smoke, you can do that as well. I've added a layer mask here, and we're just gonna kind of touch up some of this so it's not too powerful. All right, so that looks fine for us, and we'll just create that little red glow there. And now we're gonna add another layer. This we're gonna switch to the blue this time, and uh, yeah, create a little bit of a blue glow on this bottom right section. And for this, if you wanted to add some snow, some other frost effects, some things to think about, um, but yeah, I'll just leave it just kind of right here. This is gonna be our final look, ladies and gentlemen. We made it. I hope you like it, and again, if you are doing this yourself, feel free to add a little bit more, but we're going to stick with this. I hope you learned a lot between both the, the fire textures as well as the ice textures. Let me know in the comments section um, if you liked it, if you want to do something like this more in the future, uh, just let me know. Um, I had a lot of fun doing these elements, especially because I don't usually work with these a lot of the time, so this is fun practice for me as well. But anyways guys, we've gone on long enough. Um, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, please be safe, and I hope to see you back in another week. Take care.